Welcome back to the program, Hannah Rose May. Hi, thank you so much for having me again. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming back on. As I said, we had a we had an amazing time talking with you back in October. Sorry, in November, uh, about uh, of course Rogues Gallery, but also talking about how uh, Silvestri is the big friendly giant and uh, <laughs> how you were craving cold weather. It was uh, it was a fun experience. Yeah, I still am. Oh, you know, although people don't understand LA when it's cold, it's like a different kind of cold. Like it does get cold. <laughs> It's a dry cold. Yeah, it's like a, a desert cold, I guess, to a degree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want you want a little bit of humidity in that that cold, so that it like has some, like uh, some water, some some snow, some just that that freezing feeling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some ASMR for the weather channel. <laughs> 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 it's true. I, I actually I was outside last night. I, I went to the the movie that we reviewed, and I was coming home, and I, and I had to go to get the mail, and I was walking, and it's you know, and it's super super cold, and yeah. it's late at night, and it's just like you can hear for miles, like you hear everything, like crunch of the, the footsteps. That was some ASMR, like in 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 real life. It was great. I was like, all right, yeah. Maybe the next podcast would just be a podcast of cold weather ASMR. <laughs> 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 Sorry, that's our new offshoot podcast. It's going to be great. Yeah, the free idea. Yeah, yeah that's go. that's good. That's good. But uh, of course, 2022 Rogues Gallery came out. We talked to you just before the trade dropped. A lot of people picked up the trade, and uh, also over the month of December, Rogues Gallery was popping up on a lot of best of 2022 comic lists. Yeah, how did it feel to see the Rogues Gallery getting mentioned by so many people? I mean, it was very cool. It's, it's funny. I feel like, um, yeah, I mean, when I get tagged in these things, I, I, I never know what I'm being tagged for. I don't know why instantly I'm like, oh God, what is this? I, I don't know why my first assumption is like, is this bad um, versus is this good? But um, yeah, no, I'm really honored to be on lists, especially considering like, I feel like 2022 was a year of like insane books. I've got a lot of friends who released some epic books. So it was strong competition. So to even be, you know, on par with people that I've admired for years and the whole reason I'm even in comic books. I was, some of the books last year were, you know, um, were just superb. It was a really strong year in comics. Like obviously the pandemic was before that. So I feel like it was slow. So I feel like everyone was itching to like release books. It was a very busy year last year for books. Um, but yeah, no, I'm really honored. Yeah, definitely. We got an email in from Steve L who says, Congratulations to my favorite geek show for 13 years. Hey to Jay and to Mr. Green and the old man. Somebody talking about me? Uh, Hannah rocks. Gotta go. And uh, <laughs> Steve, I see you've sent us a picture of the beautiful pizza that you were about to chow down on. I'm oh, sure Jay, Jay yeah. Torres would be very jealous if he saw this picture. I, I'm getting hungry. I, oh. I still need to eat dinner. Oh. Thanks, Steve. Go. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for that. That's great. I'm now totally distracted. No, uh, no, but you're right though, Hannah, like last year, lots of great books, you know, and, and to be able to, to do that, like, you know, especially for somebody like yourself, who's, you know, so, um, uh, new into the in, into the industry and, and get those mm -hmm. accolades early like uh I, I guess it's uh you know a little a little overwhelming uh you know on one hand but like yeah. so, so 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 super awesome for you to 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 be recognized and have people like putting you on those lists like that that's yeah that's fantastic so what's next let's you know like that's that was last year <laughs> what can um, you say is next let's put it well, that's funny, yeah, better that's a better way i guess all i can you know i I just got home. I was like running home for this. I just got home from a meeting with Don Cheadle's production company on the show. Awesome. Um, so that's weirdly time timely. Um, nice. So I got some exciting news on that. So hopefully, you know, more news will be coming out on that soon. But um, that's very much moving forward. So that's exciting. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, we're, you know, actively talking about a volume two for rogues gallery so which is you know giving everyone what they want which is what everyone's asking me is they're going to be a second volume right yeah um which you know there will it's not going to be my there will i will have a creator on book out but before that comes out um which is next i still can't say anything but um i'll be doing a creator on book and i am 
writing for one of the big two. Oh, uh-huh. that's good to hear. I like hearing that. <laughs> nice. Now, I know you can't say anything about your creator own book, but of course, your first book, Rogues Gallery, it had some some social commentary in there. Is that somewhat of a theme that's going to be in your your creator own stuff? Um, not necessarily a theme. I like, you know, I do like social commentary. I like um when an idea is like I don't want to be preachy by any means, but I like when you're telling a story with a purpose. Um it won't be my next idea isn't based around toxic fandom by any degree. That was that's all contained in Rogue's Gallery. Um, but the next one does touch on I guess a trope and like twisting it to a way that we haven't seen it before. Okay. Um yeah, so it's um I have two. I'm doing another one in the horror space and then I'm doing kind of like a I'm like how how much can I give away? <laughs> um but I'm doing a I'm doing something that I don't think issue one when Rogues Gallery came out, a lot of people were talking about how they found the humor in issue one, which was great because obviously I did want it to be funny until it's not. Um, you know, and the, those first few pages of like the poor dialogue, which is supposed to be on Maisie's show. Um, you know, people were able to find the humor between like the banter with the rogues. So I was like, okay, well maybe I'll do a little kind of like a rom-com comedy type situation for like, you know, to spice things up, um, but not, but not your typical rom-com. So I am doing something in that degree, to that degree. And then I'm doing a horror one, which is like definitely all out horror, like not like a thriller. So doing a full 360 wheel. Nice. Um, yeah. So it's gonna be fun. That's, that sounds great. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I, and, and we know that you, you know, you're a horror fan. So like, I, I, I've got, I, I'm already got high expectations going into that one for you. Cause like, I have high expectations for myself. I, <laughs> I, I think I, I didn't think I was going to be as excited about anything that I am about rogues gallery. Cause obviously it's your baby. It's your first one. Yeah. I don't think anything it's hard to follow your first one, but um, I am very excited about this horror one. I don't think, I think it's very unexpected. Bless you. Take that. Snooze. <laughs> <laughs> very pro off camera. <laughs> I try. I try. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Gone She's going to call in. you out on that sneeze, Green. That's yeah. just the way yeah. it is. She's just gone all in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the powers yeah. of the mute button. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, now, of course, with, you know, plans for more Rogues Gallery coming, I'm guessing there's, there's plans for more co- collaboration with Justin Mason in the works, right? Yeah, Justin and... Um... I, I would give any excuse to work with Justin again. And um, yeah, Justin's busy on doing his like his next thing too. Uh, he's doing some really exciting stuff. But yeah, our plan is to do a, a second volume of Rogues. That's awesome. Now, when you and Justin worked together, did you guys find the way you guys worked together easily? Or did, was there a little bit of a learning curve between you guys? There was like no learning curve. It was like, honestly, it was because neither of us had ever done it before. So we didn't. I, we didn't know, like, there was no, um, we weren't coming from previous experiences. So our way is the only way that we know, um, which is great. Um, and yeah, Justin and I, um, we became, it's funny, when we stopped writing Rose, I was like, oh, I, I miss talking to you. I, you know, I miss FaceTiming you because like we were so, you know, in each other's face, I guess, because we were working so, so tightly. Um, but yeah, Justin and I talk very often, like he'll like, um, you know, keep me up to date and ask my advice on like his offers that come in for his next books and covers. And I do the same with him. Um, yeah, we, we talk most days and I'm close with his partner and yeah, we became very close and he's close with my partner. It, when you're making a comic, it's, a, you know, it's very time consuming and it consumes you, um, you know, there's no such thing as like work hours. It's not like a nine to five job. It's like you work when you feel inspired. So like, and especially Justin, um, he, he works late. You know, I think a lot of artists like feel inspired at like weird hours. Um, Declan Shavi too, he's like total night owl that like, sometimes I'll get, you know, when we were doing rogues, I'll get messages from Declan. I was like, is it 4 a.m. in Ireland right now? I was like, I think it is. But, you know, artists, they, you know, they draw when they feel inspired. So, um, yeah, Justin and I were talking 24-7, and I'm very excited for the things that he's doing now, and it's really cool to see his evolution. 
Well, you know, I'm I'm just happy to hear that, you know, there wasn't any kind of like, you know, strife or anything. Cause you, you sometimes you hear that about, you know, duos, you know, when you're especially yeah. when creative juice is working, everybody has opinions. For and, sure. You know, and it's but it's nice to hear that you guys had such a, a, a good relationship that it's yeah, continuing it even afterwards. It is. And it's funny, it's it was so good that if anything, I'm nervous about like other like new relationships because I had came from such a good experience with Justin and my uh next two books are with different artists two new artists um which is exciting though because you you know you I you know you want to learn and you want to and my next two books are also with artists who have a lot more experience than I do um so it's it's a it's interesting but every experience is different yeah no, totally oh, yeah God. But uh, of course, you know, we talked about it the last time you were here. Long before you were a, a comic writer, you were a comics fan. And so, of course, an announcement came out this week that uh, comic fans were kind of waiting to see what was going on with it. And that was the the announcement of the first slate of DCU projects coming from Warner Brothers. Uh, James Gunn put out his uh, his little video announcing the films. I know that you were very excited by the announcements. <laughs> I was very excited. It's so funny. I feel like I've had hiccups all day and I'm like, for some reason they're like, you know, being behaving right now on this. That's, that's uh, yeah. Cool. So if I randomly like hiccup, like that's, you know, you, you guys are so scary that I'm not hiccuping right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. We're just, we're just scary as hell. Don't yeah. Um, yeah. I was stoked. It's so funny. Cause I, I've heard like mixed opinions, which of course I wrote a whole comic book about mixed opinions. There's always mixed opinions. Um, but for me, I think I just felt, I love James Gunn. I I really do. And I think I, what I love about him is, and just so you know, I've had absolutely no affiliation with James Gunn. I've never met him in my life. I'm just genuinely a fan. I think for me is that James Gunn is like a true fan. And I feel like as a fan, we're watching someone it's kind of insane to think about like, it's basically the equivalent of the likes of all of us, you know, in the comic world, in like James Gunn at our age, and then like 20, 30 years from now, just being handed DC and being like, do what you want. Like, that's what I think about James Gunn. I'm like, he was just a fan who got an opportunity and like wanted to be in the space. And obviously his breakout was Scooby-Doo, but yeah. And then like, you know, 20, 30 years later, suddenly he's like, Hey, you want to work at DC? Like do whatever you want. That's what I think about. I know it was a lot more like complicated than that, but um, I don't know. I look at it being like, Oh, could you imagine in 20, 30 years? Someone's like, Hannah, here you go. What do you want to do at DC? You know. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like it's very aspirational. Um, and you could just, see the enthusiasm you know and even when he was like talking he's like well, this is a you know passion project of mine I'm like they're all passion projects of yours you know <laughs> like he, you're do he's doing what he wants to do while pleasing everyone else and I just think that's really cool um yeah and some of the ideas I thought were like really exciting and um, Paradise Lost I was like when the second he described that I was like oh my god like you know like basically like Wonder Woman set in like Game of Thrones um like dope and then um you know the authority obviously were you know big comic book and um, big franchise there so there was a lot of comic folks that were very happy about it and um, there's people who also weren't happy about it but we'll focus on the positive and um, positive yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then like a dark gritty um swamp thing and um, we've obviously seen that in comics but uh I think, you know, seeing that outside of that will be like really cool I think there's a lot of potential there there was a couple of other things that like didn't like necessarily like strike a fuse in me but like I'll still I'm still excited by them um yeah well yeah no a, a, a horror film swamp thing is got yeah. me excited that is because the the other two swamp thing movies are atrocious exactly. uh, I like them I like them but they're <laughs> atrocious and the yeah. tv show was I think was was a you know, it was just underappreciated mm -hmm. but the other one that got for me uh was booster gold so like yeah I, I, that's to your point about about gun i like the idea of the lesser knowns like yeah sure yeah. talk about your wonder womans and your supermans and your batmans and that's great yeah but there's a lot of lower end characters that i think uh deserve some uh some screen time sure. so you know yeah. I, let me okay so let me ask you this hannah if you were in charge okay of any of the either side either dc or marvel mm. right mm. what 
would be your like passion project to use his words? What would, what would be the one that you would be like, whether you were in it or, or whatever, but you may wanted to make sure it got made. Oh my God. That's such a good question. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like we're all toying with, obviously we've been toying with, it's so cliche, but like we've been toying with Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn for so long, like for the relationship for so long. And obviously as a big Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn fan, I would love to see like a romance between them, but Matt Reeves style. Mm. <laughs> okay. okay. Like I would love to see a dark romance between Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy, like in like set in like the the Batman esque style Matt Reeves universe. That is very niche, though. That is very. Personal. I that I don't think like, that's niche. I think that is right on the money. I think that's awesome. <laughs> I love that idea. I like I, I feel like that's so personal. Like that's so like yeah, and that's like you wanting to watch what you want to watch. Like you know. <laughs> well, that's that's the thing though. That's where some of the best art comes from is going i want to see this you know sort of thing so if it was if you were in charge that would be the move to go what would you want to see totally i mean that would be the first suggestion i've been like rooting for that for a long time and like there's been like even when james Gunn got announced everyone was asking for it um but yeah we're seeing obviously a little like a lot more of it in like the animated show with harley quinn mm -hmm. um but yeah i feel like seeing like a real real sexy romance like we kind of even with batman i was like just Zoe kravitz robert patterson it's right there like take your clothes off you know um, <laughs> sex sells um, so yeah you can tell where my aspirations lie uh, but yeah <laughs> so it'd be, it would be good to know that uh if you were in charge the films would be a little racier good to know they would definitely be racier <laughs> definitely be racier or overrated oh my god yeah well, that, zero no, that's complaints here not a problem there's definitely. a couple of underdog characters too that i would love to that i was like i was thinking there, and i was like i have one that i'm desperate but then i'm also holding it up my sleeve because i'm afraid that if i say it out loud mm. that people who are way more experienced than me will be like oh shit why don't we focus on that character uh <laughs> so there's one that i have like i'm hoping as I said, I'm writing for one of the big two now, and I'm hoping I can continue to prove myself. And then, you know, I'll um, take to Twitter and beg people to campaign behind me to get this character. There <laughs> to we go. There we well, go. I, so, I, yes, I was, yes. I was, I was about to give, like, ask for like uh, uh, which company, but then that gives away where you're writing. So then I, so that, that that's fair. I was trying to, uh, like, I was being very, <laughs> yeah. I was being very, like because I don't think I can say even who I'm writing for. So I was like thinking back and I was like, if I say this, then it's very, so I right. gave a very, you know, cliche answer of Harley right. Quinn and Poison Ivy, but you know, I really would love to see them make out and take their clothes off. Just saying. There we go. Your eyes, as do we all. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's so obvious. I have Catwoman behind me. I have Harley Quinn over here. Or like, yeah, 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 no, definitely. Oh yeah. my God. Well, <laughs> Hannah, once again, it's it's great talking to you. Thank you so much for being our Golden Grant winner, our Comic Aww. Creator Guest of the Year. And of course, when it finally does come out, what you're writing, and you get some of that stuff out there, we're definitely going to have you back. And uh, we'll talk comics. Yeah, I would love that. I would love that. Awesome. Right, well, I, I'll, even though I have Rogue's Gallery out, I feel like, oh, I'm like, when that comes out, like, oh, I'm really a comic book writer now. <laughs> oh, writing. you already <laughs> are a comic book writer. As soon <laughs> From the moment you went, I want to be a comic book writer, and you went through with it, you're a comic book writer. That's the no, way it is. I appreciate that. Thank yeah. you. Well, Hannah, <laughs> thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, you have yourself a great night. Thank you so much, guys. Have a good one.